Hi folks, hi, good afternoon. Hi, my name is Wes John Alder. Uh, I'm the Director of Software Engineering at Citrine Informatics, and today I want to talk about how Citrine accelerates materials development using AI. First, I'll touch on the Materials Genome Initiative Strategic Plan. The MGI is a government-funded mandate to do materials development with three main goals, uh, to unify, unify materials innovation infrastructure, harness the power of materials data, and to connect the materials R&D workforce. The MGI impacts everyone at this conference, and Citrine provides tools to achieve these goals. Uh, brief outline, I'll give an overview of Citrine, who we are, and how we do it. Uh, then I'd like to show the breadth of applications for AI-driven materials informatics with commercial and academic case studies. And I'll finish up uh, by speaking about how this technology can be used to increase sustainability in the production and use of materials. Uh, first, who we are. Uh, Citrine is an industry leader in AI-guided design and discovery of new materials and chemicals. Uh, it was founded in 2013 in Redwood City, California. We have about 70 employees across the Americas and the EU and we provide a cloud-hosted materials informatics platform uh, to both corporate and academic clients. Materials development is a roughly $10 trillion industry, uh, and it is essential to every manufacturing process. We benefit from materials R&D in our day-to-day -day lives in ways we often take for granted. Uh, the rubber in our shoes, the fabric of our clothing, the paper in magazines, the batteries in our phones. These are all materials developed for specific purposes unique to each product. And we work with some of the world's largest firms, uh, only a small group I can show on this slide, uh, who produce some of the world's most ubiquitous materials and chemicals across a wide range of application areas. As we've seen and heard all through this conference, the applications of computational design cross many verticals, uh, which is why AI-powered materials informatics has so much potential to impact this field. Uh, we've seen great examples throughout this conference of how we can empower designers by helping select the right materials for the project, and Citrine wants to answer the question of how you bring materials into this process earlier and more efficiently. Materials development happens when scientists create or adapt new materials uh, to achieve a specific set of output properties. Uh, it's expensive, and it's time-consuming, and depending on the material, it can take months or longer uh, to measure the results of an experiment. Uh, this often limits the, the speed and the quantity of experiments that scientists will run, uh, so Citrine's AI models are specifically designed to work with sparse data sets. Uh, because fewer experiments means that we have fewer data points to train the model, uh, we leverage domain knowledge from the scientists as we build the model uh, and work that into the design. Um, Using sequential, uh, sequential learning technique, we help increase speed and reduce cost in the materials development process. Sequential learning, um, I'll call it SL from now on, it's a bit of a mouthful, uh, is an iterative process where you use materials data that you already have, uh, taking into account ingredients, output properties, and other characteristics uh, to design and train a machine learning model. Given a set of output properties to optimize, the model predicts compositions, processes, and formulations to create a new material with these properties. Uh, these predictions inform your next round of experiments. Once measured, you feed that data back into your model uh, and, those, uh, and, that, and retrain it, uh, thus improving its predictions in the next round of experiments. Um, Uncertainty-driven optimization is a technique we use to improve your model's training and performance uh, by running experiments that explore areas of the design space where your model has fewer training data points and higher uncertainty. Citrine's uh, models provide uncertainty scores for each prediction, uh, from high performance, where the model is pretty confident that we'll be able to achieve those results, to high uncertainty, where more data is going to improve the model. Running uh, experiments with high uncertainty benefits the model because collecting actual data from these experiments uh, will reduce the uncertainty in the next round. Uh, depending on the project stage, you can optimize for exploration of these high uncertainty areas, exploitation of low uncertainty areas, or a compromise between the two. And using this technique, uh, we help material scientists efficiently collect data needed to create a high-performing model and develop their target material more quickly, uh, which is when AI becomes an effective tool in the material scientist toolkit. And we can expose this across the value chain, uh, making the material a tool for designers and engineers as well. Uh, on the platform, users featureize data, uh, they build AI models, and then they construct design spaces and make candidate predictions based on what they're trying to optimize. Uh, and they can also create custom workflows using our Python SDK and API. 
Uh, I'm not going to go too much into our web platform. If you want to know more, I'm happy to get, show you around after the talk. Uh, I really want to spend time showing you the wide range of application areas for this technology. I want to get your wheels turning about how you might integrate this into your workflow. So let's combine this uh, materials informatics with design. Uh, we worked with Siemens to connect our platform to Sim Center, which is their design and simulation tool, uh, to generatively optimize materials and part geometry simultaneously. Uh, this is a design for an exhaust manifold made from fiberglass reinforced PPS, uh, which is a heat resistant polymer. And the goals for this design were, to, uh, were that it should not warp or deform during regular use, and that it shouldn't fracture during regular use. Uh, and these goals were at odds with each other, so we needed to figure out the right balance, make an effective trade-off uh, uh, as, as part of this design. Um, so Citrine Platform stores your materials data, uh, and in conjunction with the design tool, you can simulate how each material will perform, and then design specific geometry and material optimizations to, to facilitate better trade-offs and improve the performance of the part. The designer can adjust their part geometry and optimize their materials simultaneously. Uh, before their first attempt at even manufacturing. So we can connect to any computer uh, aided design or 3D design FEA package using our API and our SDK. Um, and, and our goal is to connect designers not just to the manufacturing process, but to the raw ingredients of that process, and in some cases, the ingredients of those ingredients. Um, this is a totally new way to connect the workforce across the value chain and to make better products more efficiently. We heard yesterday that 70 to 80% of a product's cost is in its development stage, and this is one of the key areas that Citrine wants to address. And we're also exploring applications and quality control. During production, uh, process parameters aren't static. There's usually some process drift as you run the machines longer. Uh, so using this information, we can provide insight into which batches are more likely to have defects and require reprocessing. Now I'm going to go uh, spend some time talking through our commercial case studies and then move on to our academic case studies. I really want to show the breadth of application areas where you can use AI-driven materials informatics. So first, uh, this case study demonstrates uh, how we uh, helped uh, uh, create optimal pot, uh, powder compositions for additive manufacturing in aerospace. Uh, uh, so we worked with HRL Labs to develop a 3D printable, high-strength aluminum alloy uh, for aerospace applications. Uh, AM in aerospace specifically has uh, economic advantages. Uh, traditional high-strength alloys aren't suitable for AM. They produce weak, coarse-grained materials. And HRL wanted to improve these materials by adding some nanoparticles. So what made the situation unique is we're working in an industry where new product R&D typically takes years to scale up. Uh, the aerospace industry is heavily regulated and has high performance specifications. Uh, they wanted to break into a new market. 3D printable aluminum at this time wasn't, wasn't something you could buy um, or didn't really exist. So HRL used our software to perform an algorithmic search over 11.5 million powder compositions with uh, nanoparticles, uh, and they tested the top 100 candidates that we predicted with the model. And ultimately, this reduced the amount of lab work they had to do from years to days. Working with our team and our platform, HRL was able to research and commercialize a 3D printable aluminum powder in two years from concept to market. Um, they were able to commercialize an entirely new product category uh, and win their first customer, who was NASA. Next. There we go. Uh, this case study show, uh, this next is a, 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 an optimization of a part. So, uh, this study was funded by the U.S. Army's Tank Automotive Research Development and Engineering Center, or, or TARDEC, uh, in which we worked with Colorado School of Mines ADAPT Center. The Army was having a problem with a door hinge on one of their armored vehicles, uh, and it was breaking in the field from fatigue, uh, which was a significant threat to both the vehicle and, of course, the passengers. The door can't close without the hinge defeats the purpose of the vehicle. So it was taking up to two years to get replacement hinges out in the field uh, because of logistical challenges. Uh, there are scarce components, and they're trying to get these components to very remote areas. So the Army was interest interested in producing a printable version of this hinge with superior properties to reduce failure rates and improve uh, delivery times. Uh, our, our partners at ADAPT had a few ideas on how to tackle this problem. Uh, including novel component designs, new materials, new printing techniques, etc. However, time was tight, uh, and we needed to get started printing right away. So we aggregated all of the ADAPT Center's data on related materials 
and optimize build parameters to create a model that can predict for a given composition and AM build method, what are the ideal build parameters? Uh, our model had an 84% prediction accuracy on the first uh, build, uh, and this was key because it allowed our co collaborators to focus on uh, their design rather than spend weeks on calibration builds. Uh, and the results uh, were, were positive. We were able to significantly reduce the weight of the, the hinge and improve strength, uh, reducing future breakages. Uh, and uh, we turned a six component design into a one component design. Uh, and they're printable. So the, the Army didn't need to keep an inventory on hand. Uh, and the, the ability to rapidly predict ideal build parameters was key, uh, uh, was a key piece of that. So we talked about aerospace and defense, so let's get into uh, semiconductors. Um, again, showing how we can use informatics to help invent novel materials for novel applications. Soluble, lightweight, organic semiconductors open up cheap processing routes and novel designs, uh, but their semiconductor properties, uh, which are electron and hole mobility, uh, needed improving. The Panasonic team had a few ideas on how we could do this, but the search space included billions of possible semiconductors uh, and that was too, too much to take on systematically using traditional DFT simulations that could take hours or days. Um, so we, we helped in a few ways. Um, we showed uh, Panasonic how to programmatically develop their design space using molecules uh, and combination rules that Panasonic had identified. Uh, and they used uh, AI-guided sequential learning to focus in on candidate molecules with high hole mobility. In the end, they only needed to run 196 DFT calculations uh, uh, showing the efficient combination of AI and DFT, uh, replacing years of lab work. Uh, new insights into how topology affects hole mobility were unearthed, and four molecules with 25% higher hole mobility are now patent pending for Panasonic. So now I'll share some of our academic case studies. Uh, this work was all done by incredibly talented people working at Citrine. And it just shows how wide a reach AI-driven materials informatics can have. So this one uh, is about real-time synthesis and experiment optimization. And it shows how our sequential learning and AI models can help optimize experimentation in a wide field of application areas. We worked with SLAC, uh, National Acceler Accelerator Laboratory, to optimize real-time synthesis of nanoparticles on a linear accelerator. Uh, in this case, the material we're trying to optimize are X-ray particles. Um, we used machine, the machine's architecture and measurable properties to construct an AI model. The design space for the experiment used the properties of reactor temperature, total flow rate, and the volume fraction of three liquid reagents. As you might imagine, it's a very expensive machine, and it's hard to get time on it. And the scientists we were working with, they only had a day for, uh, to do these experiments. So we used sequential learning to help narrow the field of experiments down to an optimal set that they could achieve in that time. Uh, and I, uh, I should mention, there are citations on all of these slides, so if you're interested in the research, I can, I can pull this up after the program and, and get you in touch with the folks who did this. So the goals of this project were to minimize the, the width of nanoparticle size distribution, which is the sigma or coefficient of variation, achieve a target particle size, and minimize scattering <laughs> intensity. We initialized the AI model with 16 experiments using a grid search of the design space. After that, we introduced sequential learning, uh, which is marked on the graphs uh, with a red line. Um, uh, and after introducing sequential learning to this project, you can see how the results of each experiment are, are quickly converging on their targets, uh, showing how this technique added both efficient, uh, added efficiency to the experimentation process. So in this next study, we're talking about uh, more efficient chemical production with molecular design, showing how materials informatics can add efficiencies to existing processes. Um, Haber-Bosch is uh, the primary uh, pr uh, industrial process for producing ammonia. Ammonia is used in one third of global food production to prevent pathogens from spreading, I believe. And it consumes 5% of the global natural gas supply 2% of the worldwide energy supply and produces 1% of global CO2 emissions. Effectively, this makes food a fossil fuel derivative. So improving the efficiency of this process will have impact on the sustainability of food production. Uh, we applied sequential learning and DFT to search for more efficient catalysts for the Haber-Bosch process.
We needed to optimize three conflicting properties when searching for a new catalyst, activity, stability, and cost. Uh, the suitable catalyst will score higher on, this acquisition, on an acquisition function based on those properties. Um, the first graph shows the acquisition function in green improving, uh, while model uncertainty in red decreases with every subsequent SL round. This means that the model is both improving in quality and producing better results with each experiment. Uh, the other graphs show our pre-SL data in gray and the gray dots and progress towards a uh, suitable candidate uh, during SL in the yellow to red gradient. Um, the green star or the bar on this other graph are uh, our optimization targets. Um, and, and these are conflicting properties, so trying to find the ideal balance between the three uh, was, was the main problem here. And as we advanced in sequential learning, we narrowed in on an ideal candidate. Uh, we can see how ML can help find a, uh, an ideal balance across several conflicting dimensions. Uh, our results with both speed and efficiency of materials development show how uh, AI-driven informatics can play an important role in achieving global sustainability initiatives. Which brings me to the last slide. Um, some some t notes on our sustainability applications. There's no question that this technology is valuable for business, saving time and money. The companies we work with produce the world's most ubiquitous materials and chemicals. I'm sure you've heard of PFAS or Forever Chemicals. Uh, they're valuable for creating products that resist, resist heat, oil, stains, grease, and water. Uh, you've probably seen them on nonstick frying pans and firefighting foams. They leach into water supplies, and they don't break down in the environment, and they're toxic. Uh, AI-driven informatics, uh, combining design manufacturing, reformulation, and pro process optimization presents an opportunity to move away from chemicals like PFAS. Combining these disciplines, uh, as in some of the examples I've shared, uh, we can help companies find suitable replacements for PFAS that don't carry the negative environmental and health impacts, and we can significantly accelerate timelines for these projects. Uh, rather than taking years, we've achieved results on projects like that in months. At Citrine, using AI materials informatics, we want to do more than just help businesses. We want to invest in reducing the environmental impacts of the materials we use. We have an urgent opportunity to use AI and machine learning to transition big materials and chemicals producers to significantly more sustainable production practices and to produce a more sustainable material supply chain. The slide lists just a few examples of how we've already uh, contributed to successful sustainability, sustainability projects, uh, from photovoltaic and battery materials to greener herbicides and biodegradability. Um, machine learning and AI are transformative in the development of new and per more performant materials and chemicals processes. Uh, this can uh, in turn be integrated with existing and emergent modeling and design workflows. Uh, and the technology crosses boundaries between all of our disciplines. We can use this technology to connect, connect the value chain in ways we've only just begun to explore. And, and it creates opportunities for more efficient design and manufacturing processes. Uh, and it can be applied to some of our uh, most urgent sustainability goals. I'd love to chat more and, and talk about how we can apply this to your domain. So let's connect after the program. Thank you.